race number eight of the 2013 season. It's the Napa 150 from Columbus Motor Speedway for the NASCAR k and Pro Series East. I'm Rick Allen alongside Phil Parsons. Derek Pernasiglio will be calling all the stories from Pitt Road. A gorgeous evening for racing. 74 degrees and partly cloudy skies. Want to take a look at our point standings through seven races. Dylan Kwasneski has a 18-point lead over Brett Moffitt. Three wins already in the 2013 season has put Dylan Kwasneski in the driver's seat. Let's hear from the poll winner. He's standing by with Derek. Thanks, guys. Dylan Kwasneski won the race at Langley Speedway. He took the point lead there. Now he has the pole tonight here in Columbus. And is that a good sign of things to come for the rest of the season, Dylan? I think so. I mean, uh, I think it's going great for Turner Scott Motorsports. I think uh, Rockstar Energy Drink World Purple Chevy is awesome for this race. Uh, you know, it's going to be tough. It's a tough track, but we just got to stay out front and stay out of trouble. And uh, I think we can come home with another win. When we talked earlier today, you said that this track was like nothing you've ever raced on. What's the most challenging part about the track? Uh, it's, it's a huge circle, so you gotta got to tire manage a lot. You gotta make sure you keep the thing under you, and uh, you definitely gotta keep the guys uh, out of your rear bumper for sure. So I'm, my plan is to you know kind of just keep my own pace in the front, and uh, I just gotta make sure I hit my marks every time. I mean, it's a tough track, and you can make mistakes easily, so gotta make sure I'm on my toes on every lap. Well, he's got one of the longest autograph lines here. He's signing them for the fans. Dylan Kwasniewski starts on the pole tonight. And Phil, a great crowd in attendance tonight. Yeah, it really is. And what an amazing coup it would be for Dylan Kwasniewski to win the West Series and the East Series. He would become the first driver to do that. Back to back, won the West Series in 2012. Want to take a look at one of our veteran drivers today in our Bioblast. Hi, I'm Eddie McDonald, driver of the Grim Construction number 71. Grew up racing late models at Lee USA Speedway. And uh, just love racing in this series. The K&M Pro Series has a lot of good talent and, and a lot of fun here. My goals in this series are to, to finish in the top three in the points. Um, you know, we'd love to win a championship. I've uh, been close there once, so just keep trying, and then hopefully it will end up getting a championship. What a great job of Eddie McDonald. My biggest win in the k and Pro Series is probably New Hampshire Motor Speedway. Um, got to win those back-to-back. -back. I'm Eddie McDonald, and that's your k and Bioblast. Eddie McDonald, six times he's been to Victory Lane in the k and Pro Series East. Yeah, so many of the teams now are based in the south, and Eddie still does it from the north. That's why he was so fond of that loud New Hampshire win that he was able to grab the most recent win on his resume. Let's go back to Derek Pernasiglio on the grid. Well, Eric Holmes is a three-time champion in the NASCAR k and Pro Series West, makes a rare appearance in the East Series, and the big question is, what brings you out this way? Well, our sponsor, Nap Auto Parts, is really into grassroots racing, and uh, we're really big out west and west coast. This year, they wanted to expand out east, and uh, this Columbus Speedway was one of the races, so we're going to do this in Greenville Pickens and uh, really bring Napa to the grassroots of uh, grassroots NASCAR fans all on the west coast and in the east coast. And also, you know, we've been just struggling a little bit out west, so it was a great day for us to come out and not have to wear out points and just get a good test session in and try out some new stuff on these cars and uh, hopefully get this Napa Toyo Victory Lane tonight. Rick, this is a great place to do a little bit of testing. You see throttle management is one of the important things. This is a round racetrack. In the center of the corner, it's awfully hard to get these cars to turn in the center. And then once you do, you got to have that forward bite. Remember, these cars will not go straight all the way around this racetrack. They call it an oval, but some pretty short straightaways. Kinsey Rustin signing autographs for the fans. They'll climb in their cars, and we'll fire the engines next. And the cars are rolling as we're getting ready for 150 laps, about 50 miles here at Columbus Motor Speedway. For a little more on strategy, let's go back to Derek Pernasiglio. Guys, all day long, the crews have been telling the drivers protect the right side tires. This track reminds you of an Adirondack Speedway in upstate New York or a Seekonk Speedway in Seekonk, Massachusetts. It's very circular. You're always turning. The chassis is always under a load, and you're leaning on those right side tires all race long. So the drivers that don't lean on those right side tires don't hang the right rear out and get loose. You're going to find them running up front at the end of the race. Thank you, Derek. We want to take a look at our starting grid. Dylan Kwasniewski grabs his first career pole in the East Series. He had seven of them in the West Series, but first career pole on the East side. 
Great qualifying effort by Matt Tift up in third. He's two top tens last two races here in the East. And Matt Tift was the fastest car in practice earlier today, so we're expecting good things out of Matt. Grant Winchester will make his first start of the season. Quite a few drivers making their first start at Columbus Motor Speedway here in the East Series. Coming out of turn number four, green flag in the air, we're underway. Great start for Dylan Kwasniewski, he jumps out in front. Saw Brian Ortiz get a little bit loose there when he jumped on the throttle. Two by two and three wide. Wow, they're getting a little bit bumping and banging early on this one. Track position is so important here. They said uh, that late models and the other divisions that raced here may really make the track a little bit slick early on. It'll take a few laps to wear that rubber off this racetrack. We're seeing two wide, but the preferred line right at the bottom of this racetrack through the turns. There's a little bit of progressive banking here, but you, as you can see from the dark area on the bottom of the racetrack, you don't get very high here. Two wide once again. Brett Moffat on the inside in the 11. It's Ben Kennedy, the 96 on the outside. Really important if you're on the outside, try to pinch that guy on the inside down where you can't use the centrifugal force to move that car up the hill. And it looks as though Moffat's going to Grab that spot. Ben Kennedy tucks in just behind. Now it's nose to tail around this third mile. Brett Moffat unbelievably looking for his first win here in the 2013 se season. Has never gone past four races without getting a win. Already has nine races to his resume, but has not been able to get to victory lane in 2013. Just the opposite. Dylan Kwasniewski has won three of the seven races already run this year, putting him in the points lead. Certainly had had no fall off from his great season in the West Series last year. He's got five West wins total on his resume. Last three outings, a second, a first, and a first for Dylan Kwasniewski. Wanted to keep that momentum up. It's pretty good average, I think. Not bad. Not bad for the last three races. See a lot of single follow racing here. Dylan with two or three car lengths. That's the biggest lead anybody enjoys over the car behind them. Saw Ryan Gifford flash by there, getting his first win this year at Richmond. There's the 99 of Austin Dine. He's another driver that made the move east from the West Series. Kinsey Rustin in the 34 chasing after that six of Daniel Suarez. Daniel Suarez coming off a win in Mexico. His second win of the season up to third in points in Mexico for Daniel Suarez doing full time duty in both series in North America. Suarez his previous best at this racetrack there have been two races run he's run fifth in both of those and right now running in the fifth spot here had a great runner up finish last time out at Langley for his best career finish here in the East Series Brian Ortiz holding on to second then right behind him that 89 of Matt Tiff Kale Conley in the 47 remember Kale won this race last year that's his only win so far in his career young career here in the East Series but did an outstanding job and Really finally getting his season off on track here. Last two times out, two top five finishes. Phil, do you have to put a bumper to one of these cars to get by him? It looks as though we're seeing guys run nose to tail, but no real place to pass. Yeah, I think you need to show a little patience this early, though. Late in the race, probably so. Let's go back into the pits and Derek Pernasiglio. And as I mentioned, a lot of crew chiefs thought he was the best car after practice earlier today, saying, you know, that 89 might be the one to beat tonight. And he's in great shape here, too. That I'm surprising, though, that I'm surprised that he hasn't been here before because he's from Ohio. But Cale Connolly certainly, this is where he got his start racing, quarter midgets outside of this racetrack. And the battle continues between Tift and Connolly for that third spot. Here comes Greg Galding in the 20, looking at the inside of the 71 of Eddie McDonald. It was great to get to know Eddie a little bit better in our Bio Blast, one of the longtime competitors here in the East Series. You know, he talked about getting his start at Lee New Hampshire Speedway, where his family owns that racetrack. Greg Galding's dropped back, almost two car lengths now behind Eddie. That's the 12th spot for Greg Galding in that Krispy Kreme Toyota. Gray, one of the young drivers, 15 years old. Became the youngest ever to win a pole earlier this year. I believe at Richmond, Virginia. Done an outstanding job. Had a runner-up finish this year. 
at Pensacola his best. Been very impressive. We saw him right out of the gate at Daytona when the season began. And now it's been Dylan Kwasniewski that has led every lap here at Columbus Motor Speedway. Nine laps in, and it's been all Dylan Kwasniewski since the drop of the green flag. Here, Ben Kennedy trying to get by that 71 of Eddie McDonald now. Yeah, those two cars trail the 46 of Brandon Godovic, another one of the young drivers that got his first win this year earlier in the East Series. Kennedy with two wins already. And oh, contact. contact! The six about to go around, able to keep it going the right direction. Trying to get by Matt Tift as the six of Daniel Suarez can't make the pass, but he got sideways and straightened back out. Now he's down on the inside. Before we went away to break, he was behind the 47 of Cale Connolly. He's making his way forward. He talked about using the bumper. That was a situation where he used the bumper a little bit. A little bit of bumper and takes a couple spots. So Daniel Suarez moves up. Now Cale Conley trying to get by Matt Tift as well. Kenzie Rustin, that 34 car, is going to try to stick right with Cale Connolly. Say, try to use that inside as well. And now Matt Tift finds a spot in behind the 47. Kenzie Rustin will now tuck in behind the 89. Yeah, Kenzie gave him a break and allowed him to get in. He had about a car length, and Kenzie could have forced the issue, but she didn't do it. 34 laps into this one, and Dylan Kwasniewski has comfortably been out front. I want to keep an eye on that six car score as you see him he's opened up a little bit of a gap over Cale Conley in the 47. He obviously was being held up a little bit by Matt Tift in the 89 car. Looking strong. We saw that 46. And Brandon Godovic just in front of Eddie McDonald. And now McDonald looking to the outside trying to take the spot away from the outside. Eddie's trying to do it the hard way doing a nice job too. He's dead even with Godovic now at the exit of two. See him pinch him down a little bit there. Great run for Eddie McDonald trying to get by that 46 of Brandon Godovic. For more on Godovic, let's go to Derek Pernasiglio. Brandon Godovic currently runs in the top 10. He's fifth in the points right now. He's got one win, three top fives, and five top tens to his credit. This is his Langley Speedway car. He says this track feels like Langley, but it's a little bit smaller. His crew chief, Ron Otto, would really love a strong run here tonight. He raced late models here throughout his career. Early in this one, pretty pretty strong. He just lost a spot to that 71 of Eddie McDonald, which was very impressive, I have to say. Eddie McDonald making the pass on the outside. Yeah, and he just got by the 96 of Ben Kennedy as well. And now we're seeing Daniel Suarez all over the back bumper of the four of Brian Ortiz. We talked about Suarez being strong. He is moving up. He is. These are teammates here. Ortiz and Suarez from Rev Racing. Ooh, three wide. Look at some damage to the 99 car of Austin Dine. Yeah, Austin Dine slow on the racetrack. He makes the hard left turn into the infield area. You see the right front down. Well, that's just going to kill him, too. Under green here, he will lose at least three laps, I would think. And now we see Suarez all over the back bumper. As a matter of fact, might be bumping the four of Ortiz. Daniel said, okay, I caught you now. Give me some room. Let me buy. He's so got the room now. Suarez goes to the inside. Ortiz gives him some room, goes back out, and contact. Cale Conley didn't want to give up the spot. He moves Ortiz out of the way and takes the position. That was a situation where there was about a car length there, and, and Cale Conley said, I'm going to take advantage of you being on the outside. Ortiz wanted that spot back. Cale Conley said, no thanks. Suarez, the strong move by that driver has moved up into the second position. We see Dine about to come back out on the racetrack. Back to our leader, Dylan Kwasniewski. Already has Johnny Van Dorn a lap down in the one car. He's let all 45 of the 45 laps run since the drop of the green flag. Suarez moves up to the second spot. Kale Conley holds on to third. And Ortiz and Tift rounding out our top five. Right now, Dylan has to be careful, not use up these tires. He knows more than likely we're going to get some caution flags and that will erase that big lead he has. So just save that stuff. We heard from Derek er earlier talking about that strategy. You're always on the right side. The chassis always rolling over to the right because you really don't have any straightaways here. They're very, very short, but you're always turning around this racetrack. And so using up those right side tires early in this race could be very difficult to make up for at the end. I was starting to say that Dylan has about a straightaway lead right now on Suarez, but again, there's really no straightaway, so. <laughs> there's Ortiz trying to hold off Matt Tiff. Tiff was looking at the inside of Ortiz. There's Kenzie Rustin, the 34. 
That's Clay Campbell, president of Martinsville Speedway, the 37 car on the outside, giving these drivers plenty of room on the inside. Four teams just in front of Tift and Kinsey Rustin. That's fourth, fifth, and sixth on the grid. Ortiz has a lap car of Scott Heckert, the 72 in front of him. Kind of holding up his progress right now. Heckert, one of the rookie of the year contenders. Tough to compete against Gray Galding in that rookie of the year status right now. He's been very strong. They have a great battle right now. Kenzie Rushton is only one point behind Gray Galding in that rookie battle. We see Kenzie Rushton holding out of the sixth spot. Brian Ortiz running in the fourth position. 72 of Scott Hecker now on the outside. Not giving Kenzie a whole lot of room there. So Dylan Kwasniewski has a pretty sizable lead over Daniel Suarez and Cale Conley. And it's Ortiz, Tiff, and Rustin, your top six. Ryan Gifford, the two car right behind. There's Brett Moffat, the 11, the white and blue car. Eddie McDonald, the 71. Moffat looking for a championship in the KN Pro Series East. He's come close before. And now he's chasing Dylan Kwasniewski in the points. You know, we talked about Moffat not winning yet this season, but he had a dominant car, Bowman Gray, led over two-thirds of the race and ended up having a battery go bad. That was a sure win for him. So he, he's had some other races, too, that he could have easily got to victory lane, just hasn't had the luck. And right now, Dylan Kwasniewski has had all the luck in this race. Out in front, been able to get by the slower lap traffic fairly easy. We see the one car of Johnny Van Dorn. We saw Dylan lap Johnny Van Dorn several laps ago, and Johnny's been able to stay right with Dylan, trying to stay in that position to get the lucky dog in the event of a caution fly. Dylan Kwasniewski might be saving those right side tires as we talked about earlier. Down the back stretch, he goes once again, leading this race. Oh, right in front of him, we've got a spin. It looks like Eric Holmes. Ooh, Kwasniewski does a great job avoiding him at the last instant. Austin, Austin Dine also Austin involved. Austin Dine and Eric Holmes involved. Wow, yeah. look at the damage to those two cars. A lot cars. of damage to those race cars. Tough break for Eric Holmes. Made the trip all the way from the West Coast. I think Sam Hunt in the 18 also was involved in this. Also had some issues during this caution. We know Austin was several laps down after that flat tire. It looks like quite possibly terminal damage for Eric Holmes. Bringing him on to pit road to the attention of that Napa, Napa crew. See what they can do, Derek. Eric Holmes in the 99 of Austin Dine were the cause of that caution. Heavy right front damage to the Napa Toyota number 16 of Eric Holmes. The crew is trying to pull the hood up right now. There's a lot of sheet metal in the way, trying to assess if there's any suspension damage to the right front. And it looks like they're breaking out the Sawzall. It's time to cut off some of these body panels. Yeah, almost better just to get rid of the hood now. Yeah, it's going to be... Really, really tough to overcome some laps lost there on pit road. So a frustrating run to the East Coast for Eric Holmes as he's involved in this one, bringing out our first caution from Columbus Motor Speedway. Welcome back. Cars about to get lined up two by two as the first caution has come out. It was Austin Dine and Eric Holmes involved in it. Let's hear from Eric Holmes. He's standing by with Derek Pernasiglia. Eric Holmes was part of that early race caution with the number 99 of Austin Dine. Can you tell us from your seat what happened? Yeah, I was just uh, just got into three there, and I seen him spinning. I just had nowhere to go and got into him. Uh, just one of them things. Uh, tried a lot of new stuff on the Napa Toyota this weekend, and obviously it wasn't working for us. But, you know, we're happy for all the Napa fans here and everybody at home watching. You know, thanks for coming out, and thank you to Napa Auto Parts and Toyota for supporting us. Tough break for Eric Holmes. He's out early. They're two by two once again. Suarez on the outside. Dylan Kwasniewski on the inside. Green flag back in the air. Remember we talked about that huge lead that Dylan had. Well, it went away now with this restart. And Daniel Suarez, we saw how strong he was early on in this race. Looking to the inside of Dylan Kwasniewski for the lead as they go through three and four. Yeah, Dylan gave him some room. Oh, a little contact. Sideways was Kwasniewski. He led that lap, but here comes Suarez on the inside. Cale Conley tucked in right behind him. Dylan's fighting back on the outside. He's got to give Suarez some room down there. Suarez is not afraid to use that bumper. And once again, Kwasniewski leads that lap. Suarez still to the inside. Door to door as they go down the backstretch. The 47 of Cale Conley following along to see which way, the, which line goes. Suarez has the advantage this time by. He'll lead that lap. Let's see if he can make the pass stick. 
He's got it now. Wasneski pulls him right behind. Now looks like he had designs of maybe getting that nose to the inside. Suarez shut the door. Suarez out in front, leading at Columbus Motor Speedway. Great side-by-side -side racing back in the Packers. Still inside the top 10. Aiden McDonald with 71 on the inside. The 11 of Brett Moffat on the outside. Ben Kennedy in the 96. Inside of Brandon Godovic in the 46. Just behind those two. Looks like Moffat's making the move forward. He pulls up beside Kenzie Rustin in the 34 car. Trying to make that outside line work. Brett Moffat. Get into the outside of the 34. Kenzie will have to pinch the turns down just a little bit more with that car on the outside. See Ortiz in the four car. He's hung on the outside. Kenzie gets underneath him. Kenzie Rustin trying to get by the four. Moffitt's progress is slowed now as he's behind Ortiz. Kale Conlon now jumps by the 98 of Kwasniewski for second. So Kwasniewski got a little bit high. That opened the door for Conley to make the move and Conley takes second away from Kwasniewski. See Suarez now that's opened up about a six car length lead over Kale Connell. You know, I was talking to his crew chief, Skip Eiler, here in the garage area, and he said, uh, you know, they really started out struggling a little bit this year, but they built a new car for Iowa. He said, we made a few mistakes with that new car at Iowa. We didn't get the finish that we felt like we should have, but ever since then, that's the same car they had at Langley when they finished second, and obviously very, very good here tonight. Very strong. Suarez leading, Kale Connolly running second, Dylan Kwasniewski back the third. Kwasniewski led the first 64 laps of this race. And the restart allowed Suarez to take over the top spot. Matt Tiff doing a great job running right now in the fourth spot. Andy McDonald on the outside of Brandon Godovic. That's a battle for the seventh position. The 11 of Brett Moffat trails that duo. Brett Moffat coming into this race second in the point standings behind Kwasniewski. Now we're seeing Godovic get a little bit aggressive with Andy McDonald. And more contact. Godovic trying to take that position away from McDonald. Got into his left rear quarter panel. And some smoke coming out of either the 46 or the 71. We saw the 71 of Eddie McDonald pass the 46 of Godovic early in the race before that first caution. Now it looks like Brandon's car's come around a little bit for him. Halfway in this thing. Brandon losing a little ground now to that 71 of Eddie McDonald. You say halfway in. This is actually the halfway point of the 2013 season as well. Exactly. Exactly. A lot of great racing so far this year. Already seen some impressive performances. New wins for a couple different drivers. At 96 car, Ben Kennedy trailing Moffat. That's one of our new winners. Already two wins this year for him. See, there's Jesse Little, the 97 on the outside of Ortiz. Jesse Little with the yellow stripe on the back bumper, indicating his rookie status. Going to be able to get by Ortiz on the outside, making that outside line work. Jesse tied his career best last time out at Langley with a third-place finish. This season's getting on track now as well. The 16-year-old out of Sheryl's Ford, North Carolina, started 18th in this one already, running up in the top 10. It's all Daniel Suarez at the front of the field from Columbus Motor Speedway. Welcome back to the Napa 150 from Columbus Motor Speedway. At lap 65, Daniel Suarez took over the lead, and he has not relinquished it. Looks like the 47 of Cale Connolly has been able to hold that gap and have steadied about five or six car lengths. Again, this 150-lap race, just 50 miles. Doesn't require any pit stops. They can make it on... One fuel load. And they have to save those tires. Save the right sides like Derek was talking about. Tire management. Here comes Cale Conley making a run at that six of Daniel Suarez. And then back for position. Ryan Gifford in the two. Kenzie Rustin in the 34. Eddie McDonald, a 71 car behind Kenzie. Ryan has the fifth spot there. Kenzie's trying to get to the inside. She's had her nose in there a couple times. Not been far enough along to make it work. This third mile racetrack, we have seen a lot of green flag racing. Only one caution came out on lap 56 when Austin Dine and Eric Holmes got together. That really just uh, is a testament to the talent in this series. A lot of these drivers doing an outstanding job here on a very tricky racetrack. You had mentioned earlier the slick 
portion of this racetrack. Everyone talking about it being a slick racetrack, but we haven't seen a lot of spins other than that one caution. Yeah, these drivers being able to keep these cars under control. Eddie McDonald now trying to chase down Kenzie Russell. Looks like he overdrove the corner that time and really paid for it through the center of the corner. Lost a little bit of ground to Kenzie. Kenzie still holding on to the sixth spot. That's fifth, sixth, and seventh on your screen. Ryan Gifford, Kenzie Rustin, and Eddie McDonald. Talking to Mike Greachy, tells me how impressed he is with the job that Kenzie Rustin has done this year. Three top five finishes already in the seven races so far. Turner Scott Motorsports has really put an emphasis on the k and Pro Series East. They want to develop these drivers, move them up the ladder, hopefully engaging them into the Camping World Truck Series, then into the Nationwide Series and on to Cup. But Kenzie Rustin, a, a perfect example of a young driver getting a great opportunity. And they have seats in both the Truck Series and the Nationwide Series. So uh, what a great opportunity for Kenzie Rustin and the Dylan Kwasniewski and the folks, the young, the young people that are over there at Turner Scott Motorsports. A lot of talent as we see Kenzie Rustin with a good run trying to get up behind that two of Ryan Gifford. Get the nose to the inside of the two and make Gifford go just a little bit higher through the turn. So right now Kenzie just ducking out a little bit trying to get out of out of the mirror getting his blind spot so he doesn't know if she's there or not and hopefully force force him to give her a little bit of room. You see the 44 of Winchester pull off the racetrack right in front of Ryan Gifford. Grant Winchester out of Monroe North Carolina 19 year old making his first start here in the K&M Pro Series East. See Eddie McDonald Eddie's using that outside line a little bit trying to work him in a groove there if he can get that outside working he'll probably be the only one up there getting the momentum up in that 71 trying to make the move and now Rustin once again all over the back bumper the two of Ryan Gifford and I really like that for Eddie McDonald again if he gets that groove working we can stay even with these cats through the corner and then and motor get to have that momentum down the straightaway that'll work. Still Kenzie Rustin can't get to the inside of that two of Gifford. 50 laps to go Rickett. This is the point where Kenzie said OK if I'm going to move forward here I'm going to have to do something with this two car. I need for him to give me some room or I might have to move him a little bit. If she wants a top five position she'll have to take it away from Gifford. Does she put the horn to it. Looks as though she's still to the inside can't quite get to the bumper of that two though. She's had several opportunities there and she's really shown a lot of patience by not sticking that nose in there where Ryan Gifford will come down chop it off. Now working by some slower lap traffic that's the 37 of Clay Campbell on the outside once again giving him plenty of room. See as hard as these two drivers are racing here they haven't really lost any ground to the 89 car of Matt Tiff. See Eddie McDonald right there with Kenzie too. We've seen Eddie McDonald work that high line trying to get by. Kenzie Rustin. It's been all Daniel Suarez since lap 65. He's out front of the Napa 150. 36 laps to go on the Napa 150. Now it's Jesse Little looking to the inside of Brent Moffitt trying to take the spot away. Jesse has position on the inside. Moffitt doing a nice job hanging tough on the outside, but that's a tough way to go around this place. We've seen Eddie McDonald make that outside line work, and now. Brett Moffitt trying to keep that momentum up to stay in front of Jesse Little. Jesse ran his left sides across a rumble strip got a little bit loose down there in one and two last time. They stay side by side fighting for position. It's getting late in this race every spot means a lot here especially when you talk about points and championships. Suarez Conley. Dylan Kwasniewski. Matt Tiff Ryan Gifford. Eddie McDonald. Kinsey Rustin, Brendan Godovic, all in front of these two. Battling for the ninth spot. Looks like Jesse might have it now. If he can get to that throttle here, get Brett cleared, move up the racetrack a little bit. Can't quite get that quarter panel past the 11. Now it looks as though he's going to take the spot. Little in front. He's got the ninth spot. That moves the 11 of Brett Moffitt back to 10. Nice job by Jesse Little making that pass on Brett Moffitt. And just 30 laps to go 10 miles remain in this race. Well these laps click by quick don't they. Yeah Daniel Suarez running laps right around 15 seconds as he's out front. He's opened up about a two second lead right now on Cale Conley. Dylan Kwasniewski the points leader holding on to the third spot. 
Again, Brett Moffitt in the 11, now in the 10th position. Doesn't look like he's going to chip away at that points lead tonight. He comes in here 18 points behind. Doesn't want to lose too much ground in Kwasneski. Although, as you mentioned, we just passed the halfway point in the season, so there's a lot of racing to go. Got a couple road courses. Got the big race at Loudon and Dover coming up, so a lot of good racing here in the East Series. Battle for the sixth spot. Kinsey Rusted, 71 of Eddie McDonald. McDonald making that outside line work. I really like the fact that Eddie McDonald looked around for something and said, hey, we can all run in line here on the inside, but let me see if I can find some racetrack here where not too many people are going. People weren't running that high line. He utilized it. Now he's working by Cole Custer in the double zero. Cole's another one of the outstanding rookies here in the k and Pro Series East. Another 15-year-old. Cole Custer, Greg Galding, two 15-year-olds running here in the k and Pro Series East. Ben Kennedy also getting by the double zero of Cole Custer. Ben in the 96 car. We're going to see Ben in some truck races here before too long. Out of the Turner Scott Motorsports stable. I think Bristol's going to be his first. Talked about that ladder system. Turner Scott Motorsports utilizing it with their drivers. Dylan Kwasniewski again holding on to the third spot. Pulled right up on the rear bumper of the 47 of Cal Conley. Don't see Suarez right now. He's opened up a pretty substantial lead on this battle for second. And with just 22 laps to go, these two racing for the second spot. Daniel Suarez, his best finish came the last race out at Langley where he finished second. Trying to improve upon that tonight and get his first win in the KN Pro Series East. These two continue to battle for the second spot. Kale Conley has it. Dylan Kwasneski trying to close the gap and take it back away. I'm sure right now the 47 of Kale Conley would love to see a caution flag give him another shot at uh, doing something with Suarez as he moves to the inside of Gray Galding. Gray, unfortunately, already a lap down here in this race. With all this green flag running, we put a lot of good cars a lap down. And we talked about how we were impressed by these drivers and the maturity of these 15-year-olds. But there's a perfect example. Greg Galding knows tonight he doesn't have the best car and moved out of the way as he saw Cale Conley and Dylan Kwasniewski, who are racing for second. They are battling for position, so Greg Galding moves up the racetrack and lets him race. Yeah, I've been really impressed with his with his smarts. He's he's well beyond his 15 years of uh, of maturity. Daniel Suarez out in front. Kale Conley running second. Dylan Kwasniewski third. Ryan Gifford currently in the fifth spot, just in front of Eddie McDonald. We'll see if McDonald's going to try that high line, as we have just 17 laps to go. I think Eddie right now has to be a little bit hesitant to jump up there on the outside. He's got Brandon Godovic, the 46, right behind him. He doesn't want to open up that bottom for Godovic. You see side by side right behind. Kinsey's on the outside now. Jesse Little trying to get by Kinsey for a spot. Jesse Little in the 97 moving way up the racetrack, trying to get Kinsey Rustin up a little bit higher, and he'll take the spot away from Kinsey. Brett Moffat, the 11th car, trailing that battle. Jesse has that spot for now. A lot of heavy, heavy traffic here in this battle from Ryan Gifford on back. Jesse Little moving on the high side of that 63 of John Salemi. Oh, it's trouble right in front. That's the 44 that went around of Grant Winchester. We saw Winchester come onto the pit road just a bit earlier and back out on the racetrack, and now some issues with that race car. And so that brings out our second caution and really will tighten up the field. You had talked about Cale Conley getting another opportunity to try to get by Daniel Suarez. Well, he's going to have it. He is. We know Daniel. Well, I'm sure we'll pick the inside of the racetrack to see if we can see what happened here. This is that Ryan Gifford, the fifth place car right there, gets in the back of Winchester. I think the NASCAR officials were up trying to wait to see if the 44 could refire because he was off the racetrack. But again, too close to the racetrack if that car stalled. And so Winchester gets it fired back up again. They'll line them back up. This should be a very impressive restart. Daniel Suarez, your race leader. Cale Conley, second. Who will get the advantage with the green flag flies? Back, NASCAR Canyon Pro Series East in the eighth race of the 2013 season. It's the Napa 150. Daniel Suarez chooses the inside line. Cale Conley on the outside for the restart. Dylan Kwasniewski on the inside of row number two. Such an important restart right here for Daniel Suarez. Green flag back in the air. Suarez on the inside. Conley on the outside. 
You could hear these drivers spin the tires as they tried to get the power down. Dead even off of two. Side by side once again. Kale Conley. A little bit higher line, trying to duck back down behind that six of Suarez. A great lap for Suarez to take the lead once again with just seven laps to go. For, ooh, a little bit of contact. Looked like Kwasniewski got, no, we got a spinner. Matt Tiff goes around as they were going through the turn, collects the 97 of Jesse Little. Boy, both of those drivers having such a great run. You see the damage to the 89 car of Tiff. There must have been a little bit of contact. Jesse Little really came along late. He, I don't think he was involved initially in the contact. You see the damage to Jesse's car. A lot of damage. Matt Tift, sparks flying from underneath that race car. Salemi in the 63 also with a little damage. Right front tire down on the 89 car of Matt Tift. See if we can take a look at what happened. You see Matt's on the outside of Ryan Gifford. Then he's going to try to get down to the inside. There's a little bit of contact between he and Godovic. That spins him right in front of the field. You see Jesse's trying to get by there. Looked like Matt had stayed on the throttle a little bit, and Jesse just caught a piece of it, and around he went. So many cars trying to avoid also having a little contact back behind this group. But as you mentioned, Godovic getting into the back of that 89 of Tiff. You see, just as at the last instant, he made contact with a 97 of Jesse Little. There it is right there. So a lot of beat-up race cars out there. Derek? Guys, it's a heartbreak for the 97 of Jesse Little and the 89 of Matt Tift. Tift had a strong run going, but now they're going to replace the right front tire on that car. A lot of the sheet metal is being pulled away. The number 97 of Jesse Little having a lot of cosmetic damage on that race car. Not as bad as Matt Tift in the number 89. They're going to have to pull out a brand new right front tire, put the new right front tire on, pull out some of that sheet metal, and get the number 89 back out there. A tough break for him. He was running very, very strong when the accident happened. Yeah, the bad news is I think Matt Tift has just gone a lap down. Jesse Little was able to get back on the racetrack without losing a lap. Unfortunately for Matt Tift, it didn't happen. Matt Tift running consistently in the top five tonight. Had a great race car, and it looks as though he won't get the finish he was looking for. Come back for the race start right after this. And we will have a green-white checker finish for the Napa 150. Daniel Suarez out in front. He'll have Cale Conley in the 47 to his outside. Dylan Kwasniewski still holding on to the third position, and Ryan Gifford in that fourth spot making up row number two. Boy, anything can happen on these restarts here with just a couple laps to go, a green-white checker. Right now for Daniel Suarez, he wants to stay straight, get a good jump here, keep Conley to the outside. Suarez looking for his first ever win. The NASCAR Canaan Pro Series East. Conley already has a W at Columbus a year ago. Now, the green flag in the air. Suarez, a great restart. Gets in front of the 47. Here comes Kwasniewski battling for the second spot. Conley was pretty good there through this outside in one and two. Let's see if he can hang in there in three and four. This time by, white flag in the air. One more time around for Suarez. Suarez looks in the mirror. He sees these two guys racing side by side. That's the best news he can see. Back stretch he goes. Suarez with the lead. Bumping and banging for second. Kwasniewski on the inside. Conley on the outside. The win's going to go to Daniel Suarez. Second place photo finish. Looks like our scoring has Kale Conley with the second place. What an outstanding race there for second. Daniel Suarez gets his first win in the NASCAR Canaan Pro Series East. And a great battle for second just behind him. Kale Conley. Gets the nod for second. Kwasniewski drops back to third. Been a pretty good couple of weeks for Daniel Suarez. We talked about him winning in his hometown of Monterey, Mexico, in the Mexico Series for his second win this year down there and gets his first East win. Coming off his career best finish of second at Langley, our last race out. And now the celebration will begin at Columbus Motor Speedway. Daniel Suarez out of Monterey, Mexico, the 21-year-old, for the first time will celebrate in the K&N Pro Series East. He becomes the fifth different driver to win for Rev Racing. It shows that the Driver for Development Series really works here. Yeah, that program has taken off, and Suarez is going to climb out of that car. Great crowd on hand here to congratulate Daniel Suarez getting his First win, we're going to hear from him in just a moment. The Napa 150 and the checkered flag goes to Daniel Suarez. All right, Dylan, we're now.
let the celebration begin. Daniel Suarez was able to drive his car over to victory lane, and it's time for him to climb out and talk with Derek Pernasiglio. Derek. Daniel Suarez picks up his first ever win in the NASCAR k and Pro Series East. He does it in commanding fashion here at the Columbus Motor Speedway. You've tried so many times to win one of these races. How good does it feel to finally get one? Man, I can't explain what I feel right now. All those guys, all those guys did a really good job. We worked really hard for this moment, and finally, we're in the victory lane in one of the best series of NASCAR. This is one of my of my goals of, of for this year. I'm really happy for all, all these guys, and let's try to keep keep this momentum going. Like I said a couple of weeks ago in Langley. The car was so fast tonight. The car was so powerful. Did you have to push it at all, or were you on cruise control? The car was so strong. Since the first practice, we end up in first. The second practice, we tried to to work a little bit in the long runs, and the qualify was not really good because we started in the in the first group. But the car was all the time strong in the long runs. In the long run, my car was probably the, strong, the strongest. And here we are. Phil, Rick, we've got a first-time winner again in victory lane. Thank you. Yeah, and he came all the way from the Thank seventh you. spot. Very impressive once again. Owner Max Siegel congratulating him in victory lane. Take a look at our final results. Kale Conley gets the nod for second. Dylan Kwasniewski third. Gifford and Godovic rounding out our top five. Great run by Eddie McDonald with a top ten finish. Kenna Bell just outside the top 10 in 11th. Jesse Little, after rebounding from the incident, finishes up in 12th. See Matt Tiff back in the 16th spot. Had a lot better car than that. Tough break for him. Last year, it was Cale Conley that was the victor. Now he's finished second. Let's hear from him. Well, Cale Conley comes home in the second spot, one spot short of where he finished last year, but it's still got to feel good to have a real strong run tonight, especially after the season you've had. Oh, man, you know, seconds are season high. If you would have asked me at the beginning of the year, I'd, I'd have said that second would have been our uh, season low <laughs> but I, i'm so i'm so happy that i can't be more grateful to be in this position have the team i have the, the guys man I'm, I'm pumped to to keep racing on throughout the year we've picked up momentum as the seasons went on i i can't say enough i just got to thank everybody who makes this possible uh dylan raced me really clean there we had a tight race here for second I think if I could have got down, I might have been able to get to the six. It would have been tough, but Daniel had such a fast car. Congratulations to him. Ah, uh, man, it's, it, was a, it was a pretty aggressive race. Second place finish for Cale Conley tonight. So Cale Conley comes home in the second spot. Take a look at our point standings after the eight races. Dylan Kwasniewski has increased his lead over Brett Moffitt. It's 23 points now. Coming in, it was just 18. Kwasniewski finishing third in this one. Let's hear from him. Well, Dylan Kwasniewski led in the early portion of that race, fell back a little bit, but what happened to the car? Did it go away? Yeah, we were just a little bit too tight. I mean, I felt at the beginning of the race, and, uh, and it was just a matter of time before we fell back. But uh, third place was great. I think we could have gotten second. It was, it was tough battling back, but, uh, you know, great job with Turner Scott Motorsports. We had a, we had a great car, just not quite there. But, uh, you know, I know my team is going to get back and rally back and hopefully get a win next race. But thanks to World Purple and uh, Rockstar Energy Drink and the rest of my sponsors for giving me a great car. Quite a battle between you and the 47 of Cale Conley. You guys were really running close, rubbed a little bit a few times, but you barely touched each other. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a tough racetrack. It's a small racetrack, and it's really tight, so there's going to be a lot of beating and banging. There's going to be a short track racing, and, uh, you know, uh, luckily we all, we all came out clean, no wrecks, uh, so drove a little, a little bit rough, but, you know, that's racing, and it's fun, and I'm glad that we can go uh, through the race and end up clean. Rick, it's a strong day for the point leader. Yep, once again, increasing his points lead over Brett Moffitt is Dylan Kwasniewski. Next time on speed, it will be the Toyota Napa Auto Parts 150 from Colorado National Speedway. That's August 1st at 3 p.m. Eastern. Great job by these young drivers. It just continues to press. What, we have three caution flags on this little tough bull ring? Dylan Kwasniewski, that 18-year-old, was out front for the first 64 laps. Only three cautions, and then in the end... It was the 21-year-old from Monterey, Mexico, grabbing the checkered flag after leading the final 88 laps. Congratulations, Daniel Suarez.